Someone whose name didn't appear on any of those lists is Nick Dacos. Uh, and this week in your six points column, Probably Jake, <laughs> ESPN.com.au every Wednesday, uh, you're making a pretty big call about the father-son. What is it? Well, it's going to sound pretty crazy, but if you think about it for just a moment, and we'll talk about it, obviously, I think you'll find that it probably isn't. Uh, I think he his ceiling, when we talk about every player's ceiling, like you can say every player's ceiling is they'll be the greatest player ever. No, that's not really a ceiling. Like a realistic ceiling for every player. Nick Dacos' realistic ceiling is the greatest midfielder of all time. And as I said, I think that at first will sound crazy, but if you think about it, it's really not. And the way I sort of am putting it to you guys is he's played 59 games. Have we ever seen a player this advanced after 59 games? Have we ever seen a better first 59 games? Have we ever seen a better player at 21 than we have with Nick Dacos? And I'll, and I'll answer this now. And as a, we'll go as midfielder because it's very difficult to compare with players like Tony Lockett and Peter Hudson that were kicking you know, bags of 10. Like It was a totally different game, totally different position. So let's just look at midfielders. Mm. And I, can, I feel like the answer is no. I, I don't think we have. And I'm open to names. You've been poring over this for the better part of a week, looking at, at different players, different, I mean, slightly different eras, com- comparing ages and, and, and numbers and stats and mm. Brownlow votes and all this kind of everything. stuff. And, and everything kind of continues to point to this not being as outrageous as the claim sounds. Yeah. No, I don't think it is at all. Um, he has won more ball than anyone through the first 59 games. We... Uh, you know, Christian will have some more numbers on it. Just some of the where he, some of his ranks are, are extraordinary. But the thing to me which makes him stand head and shoulders above everyone else at this age and and point in career, he might be. If we were ranking the best ball winners in the league, he might be number one. If we were ranking the best ball users in the league, he might be number one. If we were ranking the most consistent players in the league, he might be number one. If we were ranking the most intelligent smartest players in the league, he might be number one. He's 21 years old. Have we ever been able to say those four things about any player, regardless of age? So I don't my, think we have. So my a question, I'm not arguing with you, but I'm questioning, would we not say that this is his ceiling, this sort of 32 and kicking a goal or two and having now, obviously now, uh, a really good mix of inside and outside ball? Well, if this is his... If the, what we see from him today is his ceiling and it would be a pretty damn good ceiling, it would be unprecedented in the sense that what 21-year-old that plays 59 games with that trajectory just hits this point and then plateaus for the next 250 games. That's never happened before. It wouldn't happen. You, you look at, sort of, I guess, trajectories, and we've talked about this on the podcast before yeah. about sort of players' peaks. Yeah. It, it's usually is he going to slow down? Or, or? No, well, usually you've got six years of... Not steady growth. improvement, but you've got six years of growth before you sort of plateau, you know, you, you sort of reach your zenith at about six, seven, maybe year eight, mm. usually. So what's that? That gives him another at least three or four years to continue at on least. this upward trajectory. So as a relative um, a baby in footy terms, he's done some pretty remarkable stuff, but but specifically, I guess, over the last sort of three to five weeks. Well, his last five weeks has been extraordinary. Um, he's 47 of possible 50 coaches' votes, which I think tied... Dusty for the, the most in a five-game span. Mm. But no one's um, done it as young as he has. No one's done it as young as he has. He's averaging in those five games, just think of these, just hear these numbers, 35 disposals, 20 contested possessions, 11 clearances and a goal per game. <laughs> so he's winning the hardball, which was yeah. one of the big, you know, quote-unquote knocks yeah. on him coming into the season. It's supposed to be something he's hitting the scoreboard. He's, get, he's collecting and he's using the ball really His well. His ball use is extraordinary. Yeah. Like, like, in terms of just... One, it's smart. It might not look, you know, there's probably guys that kick the ball harder and faster and, and, and it looks slightly better. But his ball use in terms of knowing who to give it to and where that guy needs to be next. Mm. So he'll give it to guys, if they need to turn around, he'll give it to the guy behind him or he'll give it to the guy in front of him. And, and actually and he put knows him on the where to go. And then he knows where the ball's going next as well. So for all these people saying he gets cheapies or whatever, you know, I think that, I think hopefully that um, commentary's run its course. But He's not getting the cheapies. He's actually sort of starting it at the source and then he's working out where the ball is going to be two or three disposals ahead of where it actually is and he's, he's there in the next spot and he's pointing. And that's the other thing, if you, if you really watch him close, the amount of, amount of instructing he's doing around the stoppages already. Oh, it's already, maturity as well. He yeah. has just taken full... You know, I know Pendlebury's a great on-field coach, but you've seen what Nick Dacos has done. He's not, not only does he understand his role 
one hundred percent. He understands everyone. He understands. Else. A bit of a bit of a little off topic on. What'd you make of him using the umpire as a screen on the? I weekend? didn't like that. I. Th- it's smart. Yeah, though. it's it's smart, and it goes back to what we said. He's he's extremely intelligent. He's he's he use he's using he's getting every advantage he can. I think that one should have been called back. No, no, a little bit. But why is the umpire getting sucked in and coming that close? The, the umpire could have stood where he was. He said, the man no, the I agree there. with that. But the fact for that some he reason he had to run yeah. next to the man. We're getting the distracted from the I point. Did, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, think. <laughs> any, anything you brought, from, you brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that I was going to go uh, open a can of worms there. Um, anything from Champion Data side that you look at and you go, "This is extraordinary," oh, and and it kind of I don't know. Do you want to back up Jake's contention here? I think so. We we always look at when we get these queries. We always and not you scoff first, then you go. A little bit. We go recency bias. Yeah. Surely this is recency bias. We get to ask these questions all the time. So, yeah, look at first 59 games. Rating points hasn't been around as long as ranking points. Um, so ranking points we have the whole time that Champion Data's here. No other player has had more total ranking points in their first 59 games um, than Nick Dacos has. Rating points only comes... Thanks writing this down. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> rating points only since 2010 have we had more. And he's sort of sixth in that. But you look at the guys that are above him. Bonson and Pally had more rating points in, their f- in his f- first 59 games. Clayton Oliver, Luke Shuey, Dane Zorko and Dustin Martin. Right. Dane Zorko was 25 and a half by the time he played his 59th game. Mm. Luke Shuey was just under 23. So the other comparables is Bonson and Pally was under 21. Clayton Oliver was slightly younger than Nick Dacos is now at his 59th game, and then Nick Dacos. So they're the three. So what's the argument then for Dacos over these guys or or someone else who's been a midfielder over the past 150-odd years of VFL-AFL football? What's the argument for Dacos? Well, I think I gave the argument for him before. It's that he does, he checks all of those boxes. And I think for a lot of these guys and for a lot of the the comps he's going to get, you can't check every one of those boxes. Let me ask you this. What's his weakness? What is Nick Dacos' weakness right now? Because we all thought it was his inability to win the hard ball. Well, he's just proven he might be the best in the league at that. So what's his weakness? I'm smiling because it's, it's a great yeah. point. He doesn't have one. He has, my, he, he has zero contested marks. We, we, better, we <laughs> yeah. better put that well, so out there. Does, but yeah. Yeah. So does Matt Rowe. Uh, right, I do have another question for you then. After all this, would you say that he's the best co- player in the competition right now? I think... Because I don't think that's... that's what? I don't think it's outrageous to suggest that, but I wouldn't have him as the best in the league right now. And I think I think it's fair, after the game uh, a few days ago, it's fair that Marcus Bontempelli is seen as that. Um, I've been a little reluctant to give it to him. I think he's taken his game to another level this year. He's been extraordinary. I think he is the best player in the league at the moment. Heaney. Isaac Heaney probably deserves to be second if we're going on just this year and nothing else. Yeah. And, I guess your point then, is at the end of his career. But Isaac Heaney and, Isaac Heaney and, and eight, they're eight, 28 years old. Years and Marcus on, yeah. Bond, like, they're 20, and, and he's, it's not like there's a gap. You, you, could, you could put them all on the same sort of line. I mean, it is unprecedented what he's doing at this point in his so, career with everything. As I said, it's the ball winning, the ball use, the intelligence, his work rate. His work rate, I was saying to you before we started... It feels like because he's so good at everything, his work rate gets just forgotten about and not we don't speak about it. You watch him halfway through a fourth quarter, tight game, he is the he's the hardest worker. He is running, sprinting out of stoppages in the back 50, sprinting 80 metres to get onto the wing to, to be the next link in the chain. He does not have a weakness. I, I'm adamant in that. And anything that you think could be a week. It's almost like he's, he's happy to prove you wrong. Tell me what you think I'm not good at, and I'll go and oh, prove exactly you I can what I was do it. Say. So three weeks ago, we sat on this pod and said he's winning a lot of inside ball, but he had a kicking efficiency of 29% or something and, and was missing the target. So this year, you know, this week he comes out and proves us wrong. So he had a, a new team record, 25 first possessions. So that's just getting your, your hands to the ball first. Uh, so that was an AFL record and a Collingwood record, obviously. Um, for the... Getting his hands to the ball first from the stoppages the most. So the interesting, a little interesting one here. He had seven gathers from hitouts, so that's seven uh, hitouts from a teammate straight yeah. down to him. But he also sharks seven hitouts from the opposition. So he's the first player ever to have seven plus in both. So he's reading. So that's, off, that's that's he's that's reading footy, off footy smart. Exactly. He doesn't positioning. Need. It's it's it understanding the, the the game, understanding the opposition. Yeah. And it's a skill. But then we yes. talk about all this inside stuff was probably taking away from his efficiency and, and the effectiveness on the outside. He had 16 clearances. Every single one of those uh, clearances was effective. So that's the second most ever clearances at, so at 100% efficiency. So Andrew Swallow had 17 clearances and 17 effective back in 2011 for North Melbourne. But the yeah. 16 clearances was the most ever for a Collingwood player. 
But every single one of them led to an effective chain out of the stoppage mm. area. So he, he's not just hacking two it or three weeks yeah. after being sort of pulled up for a little bit of his efficiency dropping off, he's now been one of the most effective clearance games we've ever seen. I posed this question to you guys uh, before we started. Would every club be happy for a straight swap with for Nick Dacos with any player? Is there any player that the cl- any club would say we're not trading him right now for Nick Dacos? I'm and of course. Age is a factor. Key position yeah. players are a dime a dozen. So would uh, Carlton, harder to come would across. Carlton, uh, look, I'm not. I don't know the answer to this. Would Carlton trade Charlie Kerner for Nick Dacos? I think you're getting right. you're getting five extra years out of Dacos. So yes, as a list manager, yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, as a list right. manager, with my list management hat on, the only player that I'm probably holding on to is Harley Reid. Marketability, age, everything. And, and I'm and, 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 and he might be a better player. But other than that, yep, I'm with you. I, I think Marcus Bontepelli, who agree. is the best player you in would, the competition. You have to if you were the Bulldogs, you, you would have trade Bontepelli for Nick Dacos under uh, yeah, yeah, it would be it'd be egregious to not. But that's that I mean it's a, these are the very but interesting that is, parameters, that, right? That, but, yes, but that goes back to the point of the the reason that he is so good, the reason his ceiling is so high is because we've never seen someone doing what he's doing this early in his career and at this age. Do you agree? Do you disagree with Jake? Let us know at Footy Tips on Twitter. He will happily take your nominations or your rubbishings, but you please, need to do the marking. Show give you're me working. Some names. Give me names. Like give me... your maths teacher. Show you're yeah. working on this. 